So, my name is Ross Hull. I'm the Managing Director of Quickgrind. I'm very pleased that you have joined us for this event. It's being held at our factory here in Tewkesbury, England. We have based this live event in our technical centre where we are machining a very nice component designed and programmed by one of our partners, SolidCam. As a live event, you'll be able to ask questions to ourselves and any of our participating partners. We do encourage you to get involved. Shortly, I'll hand you over to our, two of our team members, Mike and Graham, who will be hosting the event. But first, I would just like to say, over the past few years, we have invested heavily in terms of both latest modern machinery, skilled staff, which has helped us further grow our reputation for the highest quality cutting tools and services, not only in the UK, but worldwide. A major part of this investment was setting up our technical centre, which you will see today enables us to only test, not only test and improve our own products, but also optimise machining for your components. We are very proud of our staff and facilities here, and we do encourage our customers to visit and gain first-hand knowledge of what makes us a world-beating UK company. So I'll now hand you over to the guys and hope you enjoy the event, and please don't forget to ask questions. Over to you, Mike and Graham. Well, thank you, Ross. Um, as we, Ross has said, this is a live event at the Technical Centre at Tewkesbury, um, part of the Quick Grind Factory. We hope you enjoy the event. Um, my name is Mike Stobart. Uh, I'm the Technical Support Manager for the UK. After I've done my little bit of, about Quick Grind and where we are, I'll be handing over to my colleague, Ray Hawk who will introduce infinite possibilities, as you can see, plastered behind us. It's a very important part of our company and what we can offer. So Quickline has been a 50 you know, plus year company. We specialize in producing solid carbide cutters for particular applications. Within the last two years or more, we've spent over two million pounds investment in new machinery, uh, so we have the latest anchor software, anchor grinding machines with laser check-in um, to the extent that now we say in a, a, a batch of 50 to 100 tools we're producing within one or two microns tolerance which is uh, I think will be very good. Mm -hmm. Something very important that we'd like to get over today is that um, seeing is believing. We're very proud of this factory, it's grown up over the last seven, eight years, it's how it's changed, and uh, we invite people to come and see us. Uh, we think that's vital, really, for people to understand what it is about quick going and how, the recipe that we put into the cutting tools. Um, so I think I could go on forever about that, but what we'll do now, we'll hand over to Graham, and he'll talk about the infinite possibilities, and hopefully you'll understand where we're coming from. Graham. Uh, thank you very much, Mike. Uh, hi, my name is Graham Hogg. I'm the technical support manager for Quickgrind. Um, and uh, as Mike's just been saying, uh, one of our main moves is uh, infinite possibilities. <coughs> Basically, infinite possibilities is what it says on the tin. Uh, in the realms of uh, solid carbide and round shank manufacturing, Quickgrind like to believe that we can manufacture almost any form, float length, uh, geometry uh, that the customer requires. Uh, we're not a catalogue driven company, uh, we do have a few standard ranges but what we tend to do is speak to the customer directly and find out what their requirements are you know and come up with solutions. Um, all too often on a day-to-day -day basis you know uh, people talk to me uh, and they, they buy out of a catalogue so they're just uh, compromising um, instead of using a cutter and customising. Uh, what we like to look at is putting the right cutter for the right application with the right geometry and get it right first time. So in effect, you could uh, customise a whole component. Uh, the advantage of that is uh, you, you optimise the component to its, uh, its end degree and um, you're producing the part faster, you're producing it more accurately and uh, you, you're ending up with a, a better solution all round. Um, what we do is, again, we have a little slogan that between us when we're out there on the road and we say, you know, why compromise when you can customise? And we like to go along with that. Um, we build a relationship with the, with the uh, customer or client and we take it uh, 
along as far as that as we can we can go, um, and uh, <coughs> that gives us uh, the harmony with the customer, uh, and we can also uh, produce the right cutter as I was saying earlier on. Um, but we'll talk more about uh, infinite possibilities as we go on because it will get leased in throughout the whole uh, of this event. Uh, we're, so we're now going to go over uh, uh, to a solid cam uh, demonstration on iMachining. Uh, and it'll, you'll hear the voice of Ben Miller from Solid Cam explaining what iMachining is all about. Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Cheers. So we're first going to have a look at a presentation of Solid Cam. We're going to have a look at the features and benefits of Solid Cam, and we're also going to have a demonstration inside the software as well of the part that's been programmed for today's seminar, how it's been programmed, and then we will cut back to the cameras in the machine to have a look at this being cut live. Our iMachine in module. So this is um, our high-speed roughing operation inside solid cam with a technology wizard built in as well. So we get increased productivity due to shorter cycle times up to 70% and more cycle time saving. We dramatically increase the tool life and unmatched hard material machining as well. We see uh, outstanding performance when using small tools and we can use them use i machining on four axis machines five axis machines mill turn machines as well um, high programming productivity and a very short learning curve the unique wizard will optimize the feeds and speeds for you including the depth of cut based on the stock and the tool material as well as the machine specifications so this takes the headache out of programming these high speed roughing uh, operations so our machining comes in two stages all built into the same operation the first stage of our machining is to create an intelligent toolpath so an efficient tangential toolpath which will ensure constant uh, tool load um, on the machine. And then the second part of iMachining is the technology wizard. This will calculate the cutting conditions for any given machining operation. So this will calculate things like the speed, the feed, the depth of cut and also the cutting angles. So we can have variable cutting angles. Um, you can see there from 80 degrees to 10 degrees we can have the set the maximum and minimum cutting angles based on uh, what we wish to achieve or we can let the wizard um, handle those maximum and minimum based on the material parameters that it's been given. You can see there on the left hand side at 20 degree uh, engagement the feed rate is a lot higher than it is on the right hand side at 50 degree engagement. So iMachining will fluctuate the feed rate based on its engagement and its contact points as well. iMachining is a patented technology, uh, no other system can use our technology. Um, you may see other systems using the spiral or morphing toolpaths but you won't see any system using a spiral toolpath and also calculating the speeds and feeds and depths of cut um, using our technology. So let's have a look at a demonstration of the component that we're actually cutting live on the machine today. So as we can see, this is the component in Solid Cam, and um, we first want to do some 3D eye machining in this orientation here. The tool we're using is the 12 mm end mill in this particular operation, and we've defined the helix angle and the tool material in the eye data. Now if we look at the technology wizard, you can see it's nice and green, so the ACP is close to a whole number this means we should get no vibration and you can see if I use the machining level it will adjust the speeds and feeds 
and the step over uh, accordingly. Now if I look at view 2 as well we can see the uh, meters a minute, 183 meters a minute and the chip thickness of 0 0.08 and I've also chosen to do some retrofin leaving a 0.3 scallop. Now if we see this in simulation you can see I'm machining going round there and machining all the material off. It's 3D I'm machining so it's taking into account the 3D shape and leaving that 0.1 scallop on there. And we can see this here against the uh, the actual cutting. We can see it machining out all of that pocket in the centre of the component there. Now with eye machining as well, it aims not to leave any thin walls, so uh, we call this islands. So you can see here it machining through a section of the wall and then it will go and machine through another section of the wall to leave what we call an island in the middle and then it will machine all the way around that island to reach the center so that we're not leaving any thin walls and not machining up to any thin walls that could cause the cutter to break or any swarf to snag in there. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. That's very good. So the next slide you're going to see is the tools that we're using today. And as you can hear, spinning away at the moment. Um, one of the important tools that we're going to show, and all these tools will show some details in much later, but is the tangential barrel tool. Uh, it's a, a new development for us again. It's, uh, it's manufactured for the, the, the job. We will talk more about that when we get on to the actual uh, eliminator, eliminator barrel tool range. Well, like eliminator. There, right? yeah, yeah. Um, Easier for you on. to see. <laughs> yeah. And also, you know, it's a, hot, it's, a, it's a finishing tool which gives incredible finishes, great step down. So we'll explain that later. Uh, we're also showing a, a, a lens tool. Again, it's another finishing tool with a radius on the bottom. Um, this is a 12.5 radius um, with three flutes, 10 mil tool, as you can see. Now, uh, Roughing out, we're, we're using our Q-cut range, yeah. and in a minute, Graham's going to talk to you about the Q-cuts, yeah. um, which are available in lots of different versions, of course, as we've already said, by through infinite possibilities. Um, and we're, we're using a ball nose in you know, certain parts, and there's, we always like to use a barrel tool or a lens tool, but certain features do require ball noses, and we're very good at making these ball noses. <laughs> so um, I think over to you, Graham, on the Q-cuts. Yeah. Hi, uh, before I um, uh, talk about the Q cuts, we've got our first question, and uh, there's a question from uh, John, and he says, uh, could, um, could Graham please start talking in English, please? We can't understand a word he's saying. That, that's a bit harsh, Mike, I find. That's, 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 a, bit, that's a bit harsh. Anyway, uh, Q cuts, yes, um, it's a range of steel cutting uh, uh, cutters. Uh, once again, you know, we do have a standard range of Q cuts, but. Uh, if you want it a bit longer, a bit shorter, four flute, five flute, maybe even onto six flute, we can do that. The geometry of the Q cut uh, is a variable helix cutter, uh, variable pitch as well. Uh, it's a fantastic cutter, uh, and the majority of steels and some of our customers actually even push it into uh, the stainless steel realms with, with success as well, more on the free machining side of things. Uh, as you can hear it at the moment, it's, it's whizzing away in the background. Uh, we do very, very well with them. And uh, it uh, comes in a, 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 a TALN uh, coating on it as well. And like every other uh, cutter that, that we do in my range, and uh, going back to the uh, infinite possibilities, um, we can put a rad on it, uh, any, any specification you want. We can also make them an imperial, um, uh, like I said about flute length, we can neck them back as well if you're be doing uh, long walls. Uh, once again, uh, uh, it's very, very advantageous uh, when it works in unison with the eye machining from solid cam because it, it's just absolutely purpose made for, the, uh, for that type of machining. Uh, the swarf evacuation, the swarf form, 
uh, that I Machining produces is absolutely fantastic. Um, so I'll uh, put you back over to Mike to talk a wee bit more about uh, the rest of the cutters that we're, we're using today and enlighten a wee bit and we'll bounce back off each other as we go along. So over to you again, Mike. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. So I think as well, we you know, on the Q-Cut range, that's, that's a, it's a high performance tool. Um, we get the recipe right for each application uh, rather than just running from, from a catalogue. You know, we'd rather go to what do you want? What are you trying to achieve? What is in it that you can't achieve at the moment with the current suppliers uh, or even our own tools because you know, we constant development is how we like to push forward. Um, chip breaking tools in the, with a lot of um, yep. eye machining, you're producing a lot of long swarfs. It can be a problem at times uh, for clearance, so obviously chip breakers. And we design the chip breakers for the job as well. So it's not just, here's a chip breaker. We look at what you need, what you're trying to achieve, and we'll do it for you. And we'll work with you to, to make that work. Um, I, th I think really what we should, should, should concentrate on here is, is the fact that this is a truly high-performance tool. It, it, we show on the, on the slide steel cutters. Um, with an edge and the edge is we make it to suit your application um, Absolutely. it's not just the cutting edge which is important it's it's given us an edge and you an edge for uh, to to win over new business um and i, I think i think as well so we should state here you can see on the slide q plus q plus is a, a very much a go-to range with with um, a, a longer flute design a, a sort of as a standard if you like um, it, it's a, it's not a very, it's a variable pitch. It's a, it's a lower priced economy range. Um, so don't be put off for the fact that uh, you know you think there's only one steel cutter we do. You know, you name it, we'll do it. And we love people to throw, throw, throw problems at us. Really, don't we? <laughs> we don't make our lives any easier by oh yeah, we we'll just supply that little tool. We go for it as we need to. <laughs> so um, yeah. Anything else we need to say? No, just. Uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, um, bring it in the Q plus here because uh, I forgot to say it. Sorry. Uh, so well done, Mike. That's yeah. why we. That's why we work so well together, Mike. Yeah. You know, yeah. help each other out all the time. But, uh, yeah, it's a very good cutter. It's a very economical cutter. And again, as Mike was saying, we can do it in chip breaker form uh, to once again give you a better uh, uh, swarf removal and swarf evacuation, which is very important, uh, especially if you're dry machining and you want to get the stop the the swarf uh, layering up. Um, also in the range today, I, I, I think Mike might have mentioned it earlier, uh, and we'll talk about it more as we move on, uh, the, the high feed cutters are being used as well, and we find these very, very uh, helpful. Uh, and along in the, in the realms of the eye machining and high feed cutting, this takes you into a, a, a range of being able to use uh, lower power machines to produce big pockets because you're, you're not doing big step overs and really having to labour the cutter and tax it and obviously your load meters are going up. When you're in the, this high feed machining, uh, you're using far, far less load on the machine. So it opens the whole machine shop up. Some smaller machine shops can produce from a 20 millimeter slot up to a 80 millimeter slot using the same cutter uh, because you're using different strategies as opposed to having to start going on to heavier cuts and stuff. So. Uh, that's where we throw our technology into it, and that's where we're forever expanding uh, the the Q cut. And, and like every other cutter in a range, I'll only get better because the reason why there's tech centres here is because we're we're constantly innovating and uh, constantly developing our cutters. Uh, you know, we're, uh, we've got the technical support guys on the road, and we've got the applications in the he and engineers in here, uh, John and Charlie, and they're constantly. You know, got their heads down, and they're, they're uh, trying new methods, trying new strategies, uh, the speeds and feeds, different data we're collating all the time. So we're, we're on the, on the go all the time. And quick grind today is different tomorrow and different the next day. And we're improving the cutters, and the, the, the end result is that the customer is constantly getting improvement as well. So when we work together like that, and we're communicating with the customer all the time. The, the situation is that you're you're getting a better product every time. You're probably going to get it quicker every time as you develop your process, and everybody's happy. Everybody's in the same 
the same uh, uh, singing from the same hymn sheet. So it's it's a, it's a great it's a great route to take. It's a, it's a great journey to go on with us. So um, like I say, give us a go in infinite possibilities. You know, you just have to pick up the phone and speak to us. Uh, anything else to say, Mike? I'm thinking more on the fact that what's what's going on in the tech centre now and um, our partners here. So what's important for us here is. Uh, is, is, is the people that you associate with that give you the best chance to achieve the, the, the goals that you're setting out to achieve. So obviously this tech center can't stand alone. We need the best machinery and the best partners for tool holding and clamping, lubrication, etc. Hi. So um, the Mike's just mentioned there, you know, the partners within the center and one of the partners that we have is a very, very important partner to and as you can see in the background here with the Mazak J500 is Mazak. Uh, a couple of weeks ago I caught up with uh, Brian Edmondson uh, from Mazak who uh, spoke to me about at length about what Mazak are doing, what's going on in the future. So now we're going to go over to an interview that I did with uh, Brian and so I hope you enjoy it and uh, we'll get back to you soon. Good afternoon Brian and welcome to Quick Drain's live event. Afternoon, Graeme. Thanks for having us. Um, as you know, uh, Mazak and Quick Grind have got a very good working relationship, partnership. has been ongoing for several years now. And uh, to the extent that we now have the Tech Centre, which has just recently opened within the last year, and we have the Mazak G500 situated in the Tech Centre, which has been excellent for us. You know, we've done several demos on it, and days like this with people actually there. Uh, just to expand on that a bit, typically what type of customer would you be putting the G500 out to? Well, Mazak supply quite a diverse range of uh, customers, so it's important to us that we can supply the right solution because typically our customers come to us for a solution. So we have the i-series range, which is the all singing, all dancing, full five axis, uh, with lots of different options that you can add on to it. Then the J-Series was more of a first step into 5-axis. It's more of an entry-level 5-axis machine. But as technology has advanced and things have developed, then it's become more of an intermediate 5-axis machine. So what we've recently done is we've superseded that, the J-Series range, with the new C600, which is a machine that's built in Japan, okay. which consolidates two machines but gives the larger working envelope, so that was going to be 730 diameter by 450 high, so it's a very generous working envelope. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's going to be quite a commercially driven machine as well, but it is built in Japan, and that's going to be more of an intermediate uh, five axis machine, which is where the J500 ended up being. As technology moved on, it went more from being entry level to being an intermediate level five axis machine, much more capable, fully simultaneous. Um, so that's that was kind of where we've gone with that machine. But there's a lot more options on the C600 because the more options, the better for us to provide the solutions that are going to suit our customers' needs. So reading into the uh, what you're saying, uh, Brian, the C600 will replace the the J500, and the J500 will be gone completely out of your range. That's right. Yeah. So what we're going to do is uh, we've developed. The CV5500, which is a compact vertical five-axis machine, which we're building and developing in the UK. So we're building that in Worcester, designed and fully manufactured here in Worcester. And that's going to be the entry-level type five-axis that helps a lot of customers get on the ladder. I mean, to really answer the first question, the types of customers that we supply to is quite varied. So the J500, for instance, we supplied into small subcontractors and people replacing an old three-axis machine for something with higher specification or a more capable uh, solution. But then we've also supplied it into well-established aerospace customers. So it's been a good all-rounder, which is where the C600 is going to be and where the C5, CV5500 is going to be as well. So there's more options with the CV5 than we have with the J500. All right. So yeah. Yeah. More bigger tool magazines, we can have uh, multi-pallet solutions, more so with a CV5500 machine because we've designed this in a way that it's 
it's ready for automation because we're seeing more of a drive towards automation. Certainly in recent times, people are more open to those uh, lines of conversation. And what we've done with the CV5 is rather than have the typical Trunnion style five axis where you open the door and you're looking at the A axis, we've turned that 90 degrees so it's a B axis, which allows us to side load a multi pallet solution right through the side of the machine, but it also allows you to use right. it as a, a normal uh, type five axis if you want to use it with an operator. So right. sometimes with um, when you add the automation, the robot sits in front of the machine and it becomes difficult for the operator to gain access. If it's on the side, it's just much more ergonomic. Excellent. So the, <clears throat> the C500 is now going to be a more powerful, potent, uh, entry-level machine replacing the J500. Just to expand that, you, you've got the C600, you've got the C500. Do, do all these machines get built in the UK or some built in Japan, some built in the UK? Or do you, how, do you, how do you split that? Well, the J series was built in Japan, as is, as is the I series five axis machine. So the C600 that supersedes the uh, J500 is built in Japan still. But the CV5, we've designed and we've developed that machine in the UK and it's fully manufactured here. So we're not building that in any other factory. The CV5 500 five axis machine is built here in Worcester and it's a, a fully UK engineered solution. They all come with the smooth control. So we've got the latest generation uh, control technology there, which is fully cons um, conversant with ISO, but also has the conversational aspect to it as well uh, and that has a lot of performance advantages which allows you to really optimize your machine process so you can set the machine up into high speed mode or high accuracy mode or if you're chasing a particular surface finish you can really configure the machine so it's suitable for your application yeah excellent stuff so you're flying the flag for Mazak building okay, manufacturing in this country. That's, that's, that's very good to hear. It's always nice to hear that they're getting doing our part. Yes. But talking about the, the smooth system, you know, it's, it's a fantastic system. Obviously, we've got on the, the G500 then, uh, then at the, the tech center. Uh, is there any new wee cheeky parts getting added to it? Is, is it what's, the, what's the latest on that? Yeah, well, we've got some um, latest enhancements coming on the new uh, line of technology. So we've got um, AI is the future and artificial intelligence. And okay. we've got an AI control now, which links into a lot of industry four type um, right. technology. So companies are more interested now in how the machines are operating. So you've got more visibility on what the machine's doing. It's so you data. can... Yes, you can really interrogate and collect that data and then do something with it and present it in a way that is, is manageable, which we've done for a lot of years, but Industry 4 is the um, is now the banner that all those things fall within. But then we have an AI spindle, which um, this is very good technology, which allows us to automatically tune out any vibrations that's detected whilst you're cutting materials. So once you start to detect the, the vibration, the machine can alter the cutting parameters to tune that out very, very quickly. So rather than old school, you would hear um, the right pitch for a milling cutter on metal, this automatically um, means that you don't need to start playing with the speeds and feeds because the machine very interesting. is very Excellent. Um, we've also got some further enhancements to uh, the thermal control, the basically the variations in temperature. So we've got more sensors, which allows us to keep a higher level of accuracy, so that's the AI thermal temperature control. But yeah, you're right, it's, uh, it is interesting, and it really helps us keep up with the rest of the technology that all our partners uh, are also pushing the boundaries, whether it's the cam, or the tooling, it's the whole package, the machine needs to be able to be capable of um, keeping up to date. Very good. Some just on the smooth control. And uh, from Mazak UK, uh, if anybody's looking to visit you, um, come to the facility, look at a machine tool, go around the showroom. Are you open now? Are you, are you welcoming people in? And how do we go about it? Yeah, I mean, we, we are open. Um, now we're having visitors in. We do the normal Excellent. COVID forms, which most companies are doing. Um, but we are implying social distancing. We are still taking 
customers around the shop floor. We've got a one-way system introduced, yeah, so yeah. it is very safe. I'm very confident to have customers here. We've got large meeting rooms, and um, we're just adapting to the new normality, really, Graham. But yeah. it's, uh, it's working well. So we are an open door. We can just do by an appointment, and then we can show you everything that you want to see at Masac. Well, Brian, uh, that was absolutely superb, and thank you for enlightening us on where Masac are heading towards. Um, thank you very much for uh, attending today and giving up your valuable time. And maybe in the not too distant future, we'll be coming to you for a super deal on the new C500 and we can trade in the old J500. You reckon? I hope so. <laughs> yeah, thank okay. you for the opportunity. But thank you very much for joining us. It's been great to see you. Hopefully I'll see you face to face at some point soon. And uh, take care. Thanks, Graham. You too. Thank you, Brian. Very, very good. Again, yeah. Thank we've, you. We've um, we've had a question come in. Thank you very. Much. That's the idea of this, you know. <laughs> Throw the question in to us, make our job even harder. <laughs> We're not worried, are we? Um, about the cue cuts, uh, can we is can we do eight flutes? So yes, of course, you can do an eight flute cue cut. But what we have is another range of tools, which isn't short and showing here today, uh, called our demon. The demon are specifically designed for. Um, finishing operations in all sorts of steels, particularly die steels. Um, tremendous results from that. We make them all of various different lengths. So again, Demon, think about infinite possibilities. What are you trying to achieve? So, yep, see if you can get eight flutes. Now contact us afterwards and tell us what you're trying to achieve and uh, we'll discuss it with you. So I look forward to that. So, okay, you've got a... I've got another question, yep. mate. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, go for it. Uh, I've got another question uh, asking, you know, the, uh, from someone that's saying that they, they've not really heard much about quick grind, and uh, I suppose it leads on to the size of the company, because uh, they're asking uh, what sort of quantities can we produce? Well, the simple answer to that is thousands. If you want a thousand off, we will produce a thousand off. We'll produce five thousand off, ten thousand off, and we'll do it quickly, <laughs> just like another thing it says on the tin. That's why we're called quick grind. Uh, you probably can't see if we were sitting, but we have a partition wall here in the tech centre. The other side of the partition wall is our manufacturing plant, and we have 30 plus uh, multi axis CNC state of the art uh, grinders. So um, the, number, the numbers are no object to us. Uh, likewise, we'll produce a, a five off, uh, and a five off quality wise and uh, accuracy wise will be every bit as good as. A ten thousand off. So, yeah, we yeah. like big numbers. So, get in touch with us. And don't forget, Graham, they can always send it back to us in those quantities for remanufacture, which we're going to talk about later on. Absolutely, we're a good team, us too. Like, we work well yeah. together. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to forget some of you. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, moving on from the uh, the cue cut questions, which uh, keep them coming in, uh, we're going to start talking about the Mirage range, which is the next step up. Um, the Mirage range is for the, the stainless steels and above. Uh, your exotic materials in canals 91X, Hasselis, Super Duplex, Hanes, uh, Titaniums. It covers a vast range of uh, uh, cobalt chromes, uh, that, that sort of cutter. Again, you know, uh, uh, the, the infinite possibilities comes into it because whatever you require, we shall manufacture in the, the, uh, the Mirage geometry. Uh, and likewise, so Michael elaborate on to a bit more uh, whatever flute is required. But once again, we, we'll, we'll want to speak to you about that because uh, uh, we might tell you more flutes or tell you less flutes uh, depending on what our uh, technical ability and, and what we reckon is going to be the best solution uh, for what you're trying to produce. So Michael, I'll tell you a bit more about the Mirage Cutters and he'll probably pop back to me in a minute or two. So over to you, Mike. Thank you, Ram. So the Mirage... Uh, was one of a flagship, really our flagship um, cutter. Yeah. That um, when I joined this company seven and a half years ago, can't believe it's time. I tell you, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, was the, it was the main main tool that we needed to get going. In, shall I say, in the UK? I mean, we're we're a worldwide company. Um, you know, we, we supply to 37 different countries around the world. Uh, what we needed to do is get 
get better known in the UK and uh, I think we've, we've we've done that very well over yeah. the last few years Doing we've good. got now yeah. four people out on the road um, technically capable people and the applications people is here so what we've got is the Mirage like Graham was saying is 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 for super alloys stainless steels especially any of those any of those super alloys we don't know we need to go into all the different variations but and what we will do is again we'll produce if you just want a standard catalog of 12 mil, 26 mil flute, 64 overall, we'll do that for you. But if you say, I want that with only 12 mil flute and an R1, or 32 mil flute, because I, I want to, rather than stepping down three, three, um, three steps to achieve the depth, I want to do it in one depth. So, okay, iMachine can help you to do that. Yeah. Um, so the Mirage really, is, it's been a very successful tool for us. Uh, but you know, people will ask us, oh, I, 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 need a, I need a tool, 150 mil long, 50 mil of flute. Yeah. Can, when can I have it? Okay, we'll, we'll draw it for you. We'll get the cam, draw, get the cam software sorted out, go to drawing, send off to you, fully ISO specification, you sign it off, or make the alterations. We send it, send it back, it's logged in, then you, you, then we discuss the price, and you can order that if you'd like to. Yeah, we're quite happy to get orders, aren't we? Yeah. Um, something like that, you know, basically a minimum five of, you know, you can, we'll, 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 we'll you talk to us, we'll, we'll sort out what you need. We'll run it, yeah. and we won't just leave it there. We'll then say, say to you, are you happy? Is that, are you achieving what you want to achieve? And if, we'll, we'll even say we can get that back, we'll look at the where, we can come up with change geometry, really simple for us to do. For us, a lot of people say that's a special. It's not. For us, it's a tool. We'll make it. You want it? We'll make it. Uh, I'm going to throw you into the ring now, Graham, and you can yes. talk about Mirage Super. <laughs> yeah, well, the Mirage Super is, uh, we're not going to tell you what the carbide is because that's top secret. And if I did tell you, we'd have to come and kill you. Um, and it's also got a latest uh, uh, coating on it as well. And likewise, I'm not going to say too much about that, but the combination of the of the two takes us up in the next realms where uh, you're already high high end machining and high feed machining you can go that bit that bit quicker obviously it comes uh, with a cost because it's, it's more of a, a problematical manufacturing uh, process for us um, in the sense that you know it's a, it's a, it's a tougher carbide but uh, as I said earlier on uh, you know we're, we're forever advancing within this company and uh, we, we've come up with a Mirage Super to com compete with the ever-expanding range that our customers are coming out with uh, in the market. Uh, we like to think that the Mirage Super now is uh, a cutter that's uh, up there uh, at the top, if not amongst the best. And uh, we've got no fear about taking it into to any customer uh, and, uh, and showing what it's all about because uh, we've had some, some fantastic success with it. Uh, whatever flute variation it is and on, on the just on the subject of that when, we, when we're talking about the, you know the mirage geometry we talk about mirage geometry we talk about q cut geometry there is differences but they're sort of generic to to the process because if we're making an out and out a uh, special cutter like a woodruff cutter or a you know a t-slot cutter we, we take the geometry of the uh, mirage cutter and apply that to that type of cutter so you're, you're not only getting a T-slot cutter where most of the cutters out there in the, 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 the big world, it's a T-slot cutter, you know, it's pretty basic. We, we apply that geometry within the cutter. So you're actually getting cutters that, 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 that are not just, you're having to, you know, slow everything down. You're getting a cutter that's got process behind it. You've got a cutter that's got uh, performance behind it as well. And the customer loves it with that. So we, we don't only just put the, the uh, that type of geometry, the mirage geometry on our uh, fluted cutters, we apply it to, to everything that comes in to those realms of um, exotic machining. Um, and the next thing we're moving on for that, uh, we've got the the aluminium range. We do uh, probably three cutters in the aluminium range. We've got the alligator duo, the alligator trio, duo being a two flute, trio being a three foot not trying to teach you how to suck eggs <laughs> an ember of the high performance came in which we're getting up, up absolutely fantastic success with um, 
And once again, like, uh, we maybe sound like a stuck record, but we do want to emphasize about the infinite possibilities. You can have any shape, form. We also have a range, within this range, we have a ball nose as well. And uh, they've got a snappy name, Alligators and Cayman. You've probably uh, figured out, you know, where we're going with that. Um, but uh, they, they don't behave like that. They don't snap. They last too long, that's our problem. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've spoken enough at the moment, uh, and uh, I'm beginning to... <coughs> Dry up, so I'll be back over the night for a minute. Do you want to sit with my bottle of water there? Oh no, we can't. Covid, you're not allowed to. No, no, no. <laughs> Again, yes. Yeah, so thanks, uh, thanks. I think I'm looking at the camera. Yeah, I should be. <laughs> I just realised I've just used your nickname then. Apparently, yeah. That's all right. If Hoggy's ever you good. meet this guy, you know his name's name Graham Hogg, and everyone calls him Hoggy. So yeah, Hoggy will do it. So again, yeah. <laughs> two flute, as Graham was saying. Two flute, aluminium cutter. Um, very thin primary. The idea with that, you know, you, aluminium does. Everyone says, "Oh, just cut an aluminium." Yeah, yeah, fine. But you know, we want a tool that's going to last. It's not going to break. If it's out of a size that can be re remanufactured, that's what we want to do. Same with the three flute, and and well, just any of our tools. You know, we always make every tool with a view for it to be sent back to us for remanufacture. And that, you know, you're not just buying a tool. Then you're buying a, a whole cycle of uh i say e economy tooling um okay we, we're running chatting on too long graham's now going to introduce the the next partner yes um yeah we've well, been a busy boy out there um trading the boards uh, and uh, i caught up with uh, gary williamson from nicken who very kindly sat down for a considerable period of time and discussed about the the quality of nicking uh, We've got nicking holders that have been used in the machine at the moment. Gary will uh, uh, embark on that a, a, a bit more. Uh, we use nicking because they're absolutely fantastic quality and it gives us a rounded package because uh, what we like to do is keep uh, a consistency throughout our process. So if we're using a good tool holder, <coughs> we're going to get a good result with our tools. And that's why we go down the nicking route. So. Uh, over to the interview with Gary Williamson. Thank you. Good afternoon, Gary, and thank you very much for giving up your valuable time and joining us on the Quick Grain live cutting event. Thank, thank you, Gray. Yeah, very much uh, looking forward to being involved in this year's uh, Quick Grain live events, and uh, I'm sure it will be very uh, successful too. Um, it's uh, yeah, the the relationship between Quick Grind and uh, Nikon has developed over the years. We have a fantastic partnership. You support us immensely well down at the tech centre. Um, but it's your stage today, Gary. Tell us what you're bringing to the table today. Anything new with Nikon, and um, what's uh, current, and um, what you're, you're actually going to be putting into the, the event today? Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, well, well, the, the problems that uh, we were approached with uh, from yourself was access. I think you did a simultaneous five-axis uh, component, and uh, there's two products within our portfolio really that uh, solved the access issue. Uh, the first one being uh, uh, fortunate for us that we've got a, a new range of uh, shrink tools available yeah. to market. Uh, quite a heavy investment this year of uh, around 4,000 pieces of uh, shrink uh, tools to, to fit our portfolio. Um, the, the shrink tools we've got are 100 ground, uh, obviously uh, three micron accuracy is standard, uh, and a full range going from three to, to 25 millimeter in lengths of up to 200 off the shelf with options, cooling options. Um, so one of the tool holders is uh, one of our six millimeter shrinks for, for accessing this for the for barrel pressing, and uh, uh, the other areas, as you know, Nick and but normally it's a focus on mechanical chucking systems. And uh, the reason we, we focus on that is because you get a greater cutting tool retention, greater gripping force with, uh, with a mechanical system. So the other tools, the other three tools that are uh, on demonstration at your event uh, is going to be the uh, mini, mini chuck. It's the mini, mini advanced alpha, our very latest uh, mini, mini. Uh, it's the, the eight millimeter capacity holders. And, you know, that, that, those mechanical systems 
typically give three times a grouping force of conventional tree tools. So great for uh, uh, difficult processes where you're taking probably heavier cuts. Uh, and uh, it works on a draw bolt system. As you know, the, the collet uh, is a screw thing at the back and is drawn back into the body uh, of the holder uh, by a screw there. So that means there's, there's no nut on, on the, the front of the jug. So access is excellent uh, on an 8 millimeter capacity. Uh, we're down to 20 millimeters, so you can get right up to the, the walls of uh, some of these components. And then the collet, being a, a long series collet, is uh, gripping at the nose as well. So you, you get really good engagement of the, the cutter shank uh, with, with the, the mini mini advance. So, so those are the, the two products we're uh, demonstrating uh, with your cutting tools on a fiber axis process uh, uh, on the event. Um, and it, it's access, accuracy, gripping force um, to allow your cutting tool really to represent uh, its capability uh, throughout that process. Excellent, Gary. That covers it very nicely. And it's uh... I have seen uh, in some of the um, releases that you've done about the uh, the string fit system, and it's interesting to see. And, and thank you very much for involving that uh, in that live event today. Um, <clears throat> we've all been coming through very hard times. Uh, where is Nicking at the moment? Is the doors open at Nicking World, and are people allowed to come in? Yeah, yeah, very much so. The doors are open. Uh, we've, as you know, at our innovation centre on the advanced manufacturing park in Sheffield, we've got yeah. our nine machines there uh, from a, a small 30 table uh, machine to heavy duty 100 uh, hk 100 and bt 50. we do our own uh, testing and development and offline programming we do process optimization here um first artifact machining um but yeah we, we were able to demonstrate our products on, on a variety of platforms uh, um that are available to us um Including the things like the presetters, we've got the full range of presets on demonstration here from our, I say entry level 346, but the entry level really for us has got vacuum clamping uh, and, and it's network capable uh, with auto measure functions uh, going up to the top end presetters, which uh, obviously have things like uh, tool inspection uh, 40 times, 60 times magnification, um, and not just one camera, but three cameras for, for uh, top rear and, and front uh, inspection Excellent. and measurement uh, and uh, also the tool management system we've got our own two tp32 uh, tool uh, data management system for inventory control and, and, and tool management so we can link all those together and give a very good uh, interesting illustration to, to customers here uh, which we are doing we've seen an increase in numbers of people uh, uh, visitors coming through the doors now so it's getting uh, a little bit busier and uh, i think that, that's the way we, we to promote our properties by by demonstrating like like you are doing at your event in, in fairness and then uh, within the, the innovation center obviously we have, we have an array of angle heads um and rotary tables you know where you, your, your machine is a dedicated five axis which we have here uh but we retrofit our own fourth axis fifth axis uh, units to our own uh, three axis machines to give uh, either four axis trunnion setups or four or five axis retrofitable solutions to the uh, vertical machining centers uh, that we've got on demonstration. So yeah, we've got a lot, a lot, a lot going off here at the moment. And uh, you know, with the, the investment that we've made in, in the presetters and things like the, the shrink tools, um, we, we're hopeful uh, to get uh, busier uh, as time goes on. Excellent, Gary. Um, that seems to have covered everything. And uh, once again, I'd like you to thank you very, very much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, your support is fantastic to us and long may it continue and uh, we love working with quick grind and long may that continue thank you very much for joining us this afternoon all right thank you graham hi and uh, welcome back and uh, thank you very much to gary williamson for that in excellent interview uh, before I hand over to Mike, we, we have another uh, question that's come in uh, from uh, one of our viewers and uh, the question is, do the Mirage cutters have polished fruits? Well, yes they do is the answer, as does the Mirage Super. Uh, but we, uh, such as uh, the quality of our grinding and uh, the, the quality control that we maintain, the, the fruits are pretty much coming out 
polished because of the, the way that we maintain the wheels, the way that we dress the wheels, and the, the process that we have in place about dressing the, place, the wheels because it is a very, very strict process that we run throughout the factory. If you couple the polished fruits with the X-Red coating that we do and the X-Red Plus uh, SL coating that we do, the, uh, it's probably until you get onto DLCs, the, the hardest coating that's uh, out there in the market. And the beauty about the X-Red coating as well is it has a very, very low uh, coefficient of friction, which means any swath coming off material removal heat is dissipated out through the, through the swath. So it's slipping off the flute all the time. So we have a bit of a double whammy there. We have we have a highly uh, ground finish which is polished, and then on top of that, we put the X-ray coating. So the surface is absolutely pretty much slip free. And um, so hopefully that answer answers your question. Uh, but if you like to put the proof in the pudding, get out there and get in touch with us and try some. Thank you very much. Over to Mike. Thank you, Graham. <laughs> so the next slide, we're, we're talking about our high, <laughs> talk about our high feed tools. So high feed, <coughs> uh, th as you see on the on the slide there, we do four different versions. Uh, we we love our names at Quick Grind. So we've got Spectre. It's probably quite a good tool to talk about this time of year. Coming up, you know, we're going to machine some <laughs> <laughs> machine some pumpkins and put it out there. Um, Spectre Phantom Bulldog Reaper. Uh, I'll talk about the Spectre. Spectre is a development which came about from a, a particular need that a, a client had for deep hole pocketing, um, struggling with to get to to to, to really m produce it to the degree that they needed to in titanium. So the Spectre is uh, a radius tool, three flute, um, mainly three flute. Uh, we have got some five flute for have coming up now. X-ray coating. The recipe on the tool is designed that uh, y y you the tool won't won't break. Of course, someone's going to prove me wrong now, but the tool won't break. But it'll, we want it back um, to make sure that you get the best from the tool. So we'll design the tool short, long, whatever you want. We've got some two mil with 40 mil necks that are doing some very filigree work on some dies. We've got 12 millimeters through coolant that. Are doing tremendous work in titaniums, um, so it's a kind of tool that you, you can use once you've got it in the shop. You you, you suddenly go, oh, what can I use that? And it becomes a bit of a favourite. Um, so high feed means high, high higher speed, but also higher feed uh, with sh shallower depth of cut. But the metal removal rate and the time savings are tremendous. Uh, I think Graham's now going to talk about the Phantom. Yes, uh, the Phantom. Uh is our four flute high feed cutter. Uh, it's got a uh, completely different uh, base geometry to the, the Spectre and uh, I mean it, uh, quite simply it, it, it does uh, it's a high feed machine and it's a, a small very small step down very high feed rates you know uh, the, the applications that you can you can throw it into for pocketing for hole drilling especially into hardened materials where you know drilling can be almost impossible at times and you apply a high feed cutter with a with a um a with a, the the correct strategy on it you know you're, you're producing holes um it's one of the the things that we say within quick grind you know because uh, we've produced so many of these cutters why is, it, why is everybody still using so much drills when they can go down the road, road of using these uh high feed cutters uh the phantom cutter uh which we'll, we'll talk about uh, a bit more uh, in depth in, in, in the process. You can remanufacture the Phantom cutter as well. So it's more than a one hit cutter. When we talk about remanufacture, which I'll not go into in depth right at this moment, it is a remanufacture. It's not just a regrind. There's a lot more in it than that, a lot more science involved in it than that, as with the Bulldogs as well. But, uh, you know, we, 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 like to, we like our names, you know, we have the Spectre and the Phantom, and uh, Put one of them in and just watch the material disappear. Ha ha! That's a rubbish joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible. But, uh, yes, so that's that's a f the Phantom Four Flute. Brilliant again on exotic materials. Uh, fantastic results we get on titaniums as well. So so many different applications. And uh, I'll pop you back over to Mike now to talk about the Bulldog and the Reaper. Yeah. So the Bulldog is uh, one of our, again one of our flagship tools. Um, it was developed a long time ago by 
the founder of the company, uh, Eddie Howell. Uh, it's, it's a tool that is used in the dye industry, uh, aluminium extrusion dye industry, tremendously. Generally a four flute. Uh, we, we do it with the shortest flute length. And the, 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 the variations on lengths of tool, length of neck that we do are tremendous. You know, we, I, when I first joined the company, I tried to get together the kind of ranges that we do. And I, I gave up because there's just so many variations that we do. It's incredible. So yeah. now these tools come Absolutely. back to us from all, over, all around the world I'm for sure. remanufacture. Uh, you're looking at five, six, seven, eight, maybe even nine, ten times, depending on... You know, you take care of the tools, you change them earlier, you get a decent wear of it, you get a, a, a very good remanufactured tool back. Um, now, sort of going on from between the Spectre and the Phantom is where the Reaper came about. And it's this particular uh, four flute geometry that uh, between a six and 12 mil range uh, for particular die steels, in, it was, it's, with our trials, we, we're able to outperform, um, so to say, just about anyone on the market on that one. So there's a challenge for you. Um, yeah, I, I, John Butler, our application manager, is a big fan of this tool. So uh, uh, yeah, it, it, uh, the, the sort of trials he's, he's been able to do on that uh, on various various tools, some H13, soft, hard, that kind of thing, uh, tremendous results. So again. We'll design the, the tool around to the application. We've now got to go on to the next sc next screen, which uh, is about ball noses. Over you, Graham. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, it follows the same uh, mould. We we have, uh, 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 once again, in the, the, the mould and dye industry, where we're, we're, we're very, very strong. You know, we, we do a, a huge range of different types of balls, noses, diameters, lengths. Uh, to, to suit each application and again we, we have a aluminium geometry we have a steel geometry and we have the, the stainless stroke uh, exotic geometry um, the, we, the, the range that we do uh, again you know I mean uh, the, you get 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 millimeter ball nose you know if you want a 4.8 millimeter ball nose or a, a 5.3 millimeter ball nose uh, an 8.7 millimeter ball nose, you know, we're going to make it for you, and especially if it's in go going to be in quantity, you're going to get it for the same price as you would for uh, uh, a different type of ball nose. And likewise, again, uh, as we go along with everything that we do, we, we can we can do the imperial range as well. Uh, we have fantastic results with, with all, all the ball nose that we do, and um, uh, again, you can have it in, in whatever length pot you, you require and whatever coatings, uh, in particular when you when you look at the aluminium geometry and we've not really touched on it as yet because we've been talking about you know the Mirage uh, type range and the coatings on that and what, what goes on to it. We do a TX coating and a TX plus coating which um, on high silicon content materials and castings you know when you apply the TX coating onto it you know it's a fantastic combination for that type of machining. Um, so the, yeah, there's so much what you you can do uh, with it with throughout the range, and, and again I keep saying about you know it's infinite possibilities. But uh, I'll stop babbling on about ball noise. You know the, the it's a good product. Uh, it's another fantastic product within the range. So we're now going to go over to uh, an interview I did uh, I, I don't know maybe about a month ago because I've been doing these things for for ages with uh, Ian Llewellyn from uh, uh, Solid Cam, and so it's uh, it's over to over to the interview with Ian. So. We'll see you soon. Cheers. Hi, Ian. Thanks for joining us in this uh, live cutting event. Hi, Graham. Thank you very much for inviting us. Good to be with you. Yes, it's all come and uh, quick grind. I've done several events together now. But I was wondering if we could talk a little about the software from your point of view. So where do you see SolidCam strength in the CAM market compared to other available systems? Well, I think we've got kind of three main areas. Whilst SolidCam is a great CAD CAM system across the board, I think we've got three elements that make us stand out from, um, from other systems. Uh, iMachining is probably our flagship product. Um, this is a 
uh, a system that sets itself up and adjusts the speeds and feeds relative to the tool. So you enter the tool data and the material data, um, and you know the results that you get of that is a self-adjusting feed rate, which um, obviously has its benefits. Um, maybe the second one is um, Swiss type or sliding head machines. Um, these particular machines are very complex. Um, you know, they take a lot of um, consideration when you're doing the post processors because you've got, you know, possibly up to 13 axis all moving simultaneously. So, you know, you need to make sure that you're, uh, you're, you're watching out for all of those. Um, and probably the third one is one that we've been working with you guys quite closely with is barrel tooling. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, when you come to five axis and using barrel tools as opposed to traditional ball noses, um, there's some massive savings to be had. Yeah. You mentioned the uh, iron machine in the end. Um, what time? Uh, what uh, time saving do you see the iron machine gives you? Well, we, we advertise iron machine in, as being able to save um, sort of around seventy percent, and that's quite a conservative estimate, to be honest. Um, depending on the material type, I mean, high carbon steels we're definitely looking at seventy percent. But when you start getting into your stainless steels um, and getting into your exotics, your canals. Um, and then up to titanium and stuff like that. Um, we've seen savings of over 90%. Um, you know, and, and whilst maybe the initial cost of our machining looks a little bit expensive, um, when you start looking at those time savings, you very quickly recoup your money. So it's, um, you know, it's, a, it's a great product for, for time saving and money saving. Right, okay. And uh, are similar savings uh, are comparable to like when you're working with barrel to them? Well, yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've found, especially, like I say, working with quick grind, is um, being able to do a much bigger step over um, because of the, the radius form on the side of the tool. Um, traditional ball noses, to get a finish, you're probably looking at sort of 0 0.1, 0 0.2, max, you know, maximum step downs. Um, but when you're looking at 10 to 20 times um, that depth of cut and still achieving and um, you know minimal cost pipes and, and surface finish is is where you need it to be and um, those time savings again become quite apparent and you know barrel tooling isn't massively expensive you just need the technology to be able to drive it which is where solid cam comes in yeah very good uh, earlier on you touched on uh, the sliding heads um how difficult is it supporting a uh, swiss style sliding head machine as I kind of said previously, they're, they're notoriously difficult um, because of the number of axes that you've got to sort of monitor yeah. and maintain all the time. Absolutely. So your post-processor needs to be absolutely spot on. Um, and then when you combine that with, um, we've got simulation within the system as well, that allows us to be able to see what's going to happen. Um, and I think one of the points that we try to sell is that actually you can use SolidCam as a testing ground. Um, you can try a process, um, you can make sure that it's not going to collide, you can look at the time set, at the cycle time. Um, then if you think, well, actually, maybe if I try this in a different way, um, yeah. you can then have a look and see whether or not you've made any time savings or whether it's, you know, it's better for the machine. Um, and, and selling that concept of being able to trial it out and test it before you commit it to the machine. You know, all the time you're doing this, your machine's still producing parts and still making money for you. Um, but, you know, using solid cam, you're, you're then able to, to, to sort of run all these tests without any worries about it. So, yeah, that, you know, that, that's kind of where we, we see that um, the sliding head technology is going to sort of be beneficial. So, big, yeah, it's good stuff. It's a big strength for you, isn't it? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Excellent, Ian. Well, you've covered some fantastic points here, and in uh, particular the eye machine, you know, which is... Uh, super tool and uh, all I can say is thanks very much for joining us today and I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the live webinar. Thank you. Yeah, brilliant. Well, thank you very much for inviting us. It's great to work with you guys. So, um, you know, we look forward to when we can work together live rather than having to do it across uh, webinars and stuff. Absolutely. You know, I look forward to that day myself. And uh, once again, Absolutely. thanks very much. And uh, we all do right. a good team together. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Take care, Graham. Cheers. Bye. -bye. I hope you're all enjoying the event so far. So 
So I just wanted to do a, a quick presentation on 5-axis in SolidCam and the barrel tool as well, show you how these have been programmed. So this toolpath here, we've selected the uh, radius face and the two edges to blend between. The tool is a 6mm ball nose and we're doing a 0.2mm step over. These are the only selections I've made um, and we can see there we get a nice sweeping toolpath. We can see that actually cut in there in the top left hand side as well. Nice sweeping toolpath around there. You can see that we are fully collision aware. The bono stops before it hits any of the uh, vice or fixturing. Now the next toolpath is the barrel cutter. So here we select parallel cuts, we select the face we want to machine and we want to wrap that around the Y axis. The tool is the barrel cutter that we're using today, so this is a 250mm radius on the cutter and the clearance plane is in the Y direction. Now I'm going to put the sort into one way and climb. And on the tool axis control, instead of using angle, we're going to use the contact point of the barrel section. Now I'm going to set this to between 40 and 15%. That means that we're going to contact with the cutter between 40% around the barrel section, down to 15% around the barrel section. I'm going to show you what I mean by that just in the um, basic simulation first of all. We can see here, if I just start the simulation and play that along. <clears throat> that first cut there, the contact point is 40% up along that barrel section. Now if we just speed that up and as we go down the toolpath the barrel tool will start to rock over and if we just pause that there and get it to the top you can see that we're a lot further down the barrel section on the contact point now so now we're moving towards that 15 percent so this is to stop us using the cutter in the same point all the time we're varying the contact point and we can vary that anywhere between 0 and 100 percent so you can see there now we're getting a lot closer to the 15 percent mark as we get to the bottom of that toolpath and we can see here in simulation the nice sweeping toolpath that we get as we contact around that outside shape. And you can see that in the top left hand corner as well actually cutting. So we'll hand back over now to um, Mike and Graham and we'll see this actually cutting live on the machine and you'll be able to see that barrel cutter create a nice finish along that face. Uh, hi and welcome back and uh, thank you very much to Ian Llewellyn uh, for the interview and um, hopefully catch up with you soon Ian. Take care. Uh, so in the background at the moment the, the six millimeter uh, ball nose is uh, working its magic but um, enough talk about balls <laughs> let's get on to talking about the eliminator barrel tools <laughs> and uh, going along with the flow uh, of uh, why compromise when you can customize why use a ball nose when you can use a barrel cutter because your time saving uh, under uh, uh, certain applications can be absolutely phenomenal um, I finished off earlier on talking about the ball, ball nose I'll, I'll let Mike uh, talk about the barrel cutters for a little bit and I'll come back in and speak about it myself. It's one of our favourite subjects, so <laughs> over to you Mike for a bit. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks Graham. Yeah. Well uh, absolutely, the, the barrel tool is a, a tremendous new idea if you like, but it has been around for a few while, you know, a few years really, but yeah. uh, we, we've uh, oh. introduced it into the, is it four or five years? Four years we've now. introduced it into the, the technical centre and into our programme because um, we see it, uh, and Eddie and Ross, as soon as they, uh, it, it sort of uh, was introduced to us, um, the idea was that this is uh, going to revolutionise finishing techniques uh, throughout the world. 
Um, so Eliminator, we named it Eliminator because we're, we're basically eliminating all opposition on this because we're, we're market leaders on these barrel tools. And what you've got to understand is, we'll go into a little bit more detail. You'll see in the next screen, uh, or a screen in the slide yep. in a minute, where it shows the difference in step down from a barrel tool to a, a bull nose. So let's, let's assume you've, you've got a, a 10 millimeter bull nose, 0.2 step down, you can't. You're getting a nice finish, but you the cycle time is huge. You'd like to you get a better cycle time with a, a increased step down. You can't. You, you know you're limited on the dynamics on the tool. So if you look on the, on the nice screen, um, hopefully it's showing now. But you'll see that the brow tool is based on a, basically a huge ball nose. So we use the radius of that uh, tool to to give us the step down increase so whether it's one mil two mil three mil five six uh, it depends on what you're trying to achieve um, so there's different versions of barrel tools which Graham will go into but uh, I think the, the most important thing to say to you is that we develop the tools around the job you're gonna get fed up with this so it's called infinite possibilities actually you won't get fed up with it because when you actually start buying into the process you'll suddenly I realize that there's huge savings to be made, cycle time savings. Now, one thing as well, as we love to always say, every tool we make, we make with a view to be remanufactured. Uh, recently, there was a, a batch of 200 barrel tools that went out to uh, one of our customers in America, and they send them back on a regular basis for remanufacture. Um, so we haven't actually got to the end of how many times that can be remanufactured because they're, they're working so well. And they're running in some difficult difficult materials uh, and titanium as well. Uh, do you want to talk a bit more about the different versions of barrel tools? Uh, uh, hey. uh, is your no, throat no going dry, Mike? Do no you want me to take over for a minute? <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. no problem at all. Yeah, we can talk about barrel tools all day long, but we've not got the time on our feed. And we'll get around for Ben for going over our time limit. The, the producer's very strict that we deal with. But anyway, here we go. Yes, uh, barrel tools, once again, Mike's probably uh, gone over it again. We, we will manufacture a barrel cutter for any any material and again uh, like I was saying earlier we, we have the geometry to suit the, the application and suit the right material um, the uh, you'll hear people talking about uh, conical barrel cutters uh, you'll hear them talking about tangential barrel cut barrel cutters and you'll hear people even talking about conventional barrel cutters because barrel cutters have been around for a long long time there's just not been the, the software to drive them and uh, in this day and age, we have uh, SolarCam proving it out. That uh, the, the the software is there now. It's a very, very, very complex software. Uh, it's going in and, now. Uh, sorry. It's going in now. Yeah, it's it's coming in right now as I speak. What superb timing! <laughs> yeah, just shows it's live, and we're uh, we're not just uh, gimmicking it here. But the barrel cutter's coming in now. It's going to start whizzing about. Like I say, we we do. Uh, conical tangential barrel cutters. Basically what I'm trying to say is quick grind, uh, if you've got an idea in your head or your whatever whatever uh, geometry of barrel cutter you're using, we can, we can make any of them. Uh, we, we make them from our own our own our own software, you know, that that again there's a standard range out there. There's so many people you'll see on social media at the moment who are uh, chucking out barrel cutters and they say what's well, different about our barrel cutters. Well the difference quite simply is once again, and going back to infinite possibilities, we'll make any radius a barrel uh, that you require. Uh, it is going to be a situation as we move forward with barrel, cutter, barrel cutting technology that is going to be almost bespoke to the, to the part that you're producing, which will, which will determine and drive the radius that you're going to apply uh, to your application. And uh, we've, we've produced, I think, as small as 35 rads. Yep. Uh, uh, and we've gone up to, believe it or not, 10,000, which is almost impossible to calculate, but we did, and it worked, um, which is, is almost a straight line, but there, there is a radius on it. The, the process for uh, grinding a barrel cutter is very, very difficult. Uh, it's one of the most difficult processes within, uh, within the quick grind, but uh, we master this, and that, that's what the challenges are for us, and uh, yep. we get it right and we get the application right and it goes out there. Um, time saving uh, is, is absolutely 
astronomical of, of branch note already. <laughs> but uh, can you say that astronomical? Astronomical. <laughs> uh, that, uh, that's not a swear word. <laughs> no, you, you get away with that one. Uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic. You know the time saving. Uh, you can get up to ninety percent saving uh, on a, on a barrel tool, uh, and. Um, Carry on, Mike. Yes. Yeah, can I jump in there for a sec? Yes, no one problem, of the things mate. I think we, we, we want to say to you all is a little bit on from what Graham said earlier. Is that, you know, if you can use a bell, bell tool instead of a ball nose, then why not? So the question that I'd like to put to viewers is, ask us, can I use a bell tool? I'm using a ball nose. I wanna, I'm happy with the finish, or maybe not happy with the finish. I've got to improve cycle time. I'm stuck. How can I go? So with the right cam software, then you can drive this. Uh, that's that's a, the important thing. With with the improvements in cam software, um, the barrel tool will be designed around your job. Um, obviously, we, we're running with with uh, solid cam eye machining here. Um, it, it's a tremendous way that we can prove to you uh, some very very good savings. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, um, we, 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 we do barrel tools, so maybe we do an F version barrel tool, we do a, a lens tool, which we're going to come on to in a bit. Um, if you don't understand the principle, or we haven't really explained it too well, go on to our web, website, uh, quickgrind.com, and uh, you can download the catalogs, which all of these tooling suits, which tools we've shown you, these are just ranges that we are trying to highlight here. That when someone says what what range to do we say it's, it's infinite you tell us you know what you're trying to achieve what tool do you want if we c if we can model it on the cam uh, cad then we'll we'll make it for you um one of the tool we uh, we had a, a gear that we had to look at very small gear 60 i think 65 teeth the tool had to be one mil 1.8 diameter with a 0.8 ball nose on the end and it, it, it worked tremendous you know it's great um how are we doing with time? Are we nearly? I think we're doing we're absolutely yeah, famously. And okay. um, just to add a wee bit, a wee bit more in uh, yeah. We also have the uh, the the lens tool as well, which uh, basically is um, a radius on the the bottom of a an end mill, so to speak. Um, uh, it comes under the barrel tool and uh, format. It comes under our eliminator range. Um, we're, we're also using it on uh, the the demo we're doing today, and likewise again, your your step over can be I increased uh, massively, uh, uh, resulting in in a time saving one once more. Um, we could we could talk for hours and hours about barrel barrel tooling. What we, we really need to do is get across the uh, the advantages of it. Um, but moving on again, you know, and, and talking about one of our other partners. Uh, who have recently installed their surface checking uh, 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 system onto onto the Mazic, and that's a company called Bloom. And uh, we're now going to go over to uh, uh, interview I did a few weeks ago with uh, David Mould from Bloom. He's going to talk a bit more about the system that's just been installed on the Mazic. Over to you, David. Thank you. Good afternoon, David, and welcome to Quick Brains Live Cutting Event. Oh, hi, Graham. Yeah, pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting us. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you as well. Uh, you're one of our, our newest um, partners in the tech centre, and already you've made an impact. And I do believe at this moment in time, we have a new system getting installed on our Mazda G500. So I take it that's what you're bringing to the table in the, the uh, live cutting event. So could you explain a bit more about the, the process that's going on in the machine at the moment? Just now, thank you. Yeah, yes, certainly. Um, a pleasure to. Um, yeah, it's uh, we're actually installing it as we speak, so hot off the press on this one, uh, yeah. with our very latest technology, really. And um, uh, I think people who know Bloom uh, know that we um, came out with the Digilog family of product products um, a fair few years ago now, and there's been new adaptations to that product as time has gone on, and. Um, to, to briefly explain, the Digilog is taking conventional probing, so touch probing for part inspection, part setup, um, but it also brings an analog aspect to it, so we can start to do scanning of the part for, yeah. for free form components, five axis components, and we can actually do full measurement on the machine. Right. Um, 
but the system that we're currently installing now on your Mazak uh, in your showroom there is is the latest generation of the digital products uh, called the roughness gauge, the TC64RG. Um, and it's a spindle probe that is designed for surface me measurement. So measuring the surface integrity and quality inside the machine tool uh, while the component is, is still clamped. Um, so, so what we have, what people will see there on the Mazak is that there's uh, a spindle probe. It looks like a conventional spindle pro probe held in the, in the machine tool spindle and loaded in through the tool change. Um, but we, when we drag across the surface, um, we're actually uh, measuring the surface quality uh, of the component. And then with the external software, the Bloom RG uh, version 3 software is doing then an analysis and it gives you the results uh, of the surface finish in all the conventional measurement uh, protocols. So RA, RZ, RT, RMAX, yeah. RMIN. You'll get all those results displayed across the screen which people will be able to see so a customer can instantly get the result in the in the format that they prefer that they uh, you know would, would normally measure their measure their parts with so yeah it's the very latest technology from bloom yeah that's excellent and uh, thank you for explaining that and um we are very grateful that it's um, getting installed onto the machine you know it's another advancement for us another something we can talk about i'm sure in the future uh, yeah. We'll probably do more events like this and involving yourself and going more in depth into uh, how yeah, it's yeah. being used. Um, from bomb yourselves, uh, are the doors open? Uh, are you back in action after everything that's been happening over the last few months in the May? Um, are people okay to come in and see you and, um, and get a look around the facility in the showroom? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, these crazy times we're living, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, we, we actually, we didn't stop, we stayed open, although oh, very good. Right. A, lot, a lot of the time was a lot restricted and not many people wanted to travel to about really, but uh, yeah, we've we've set up the, the facility that we have here in Burton, and so it's, we, we comply with all the, the government guidelines and laws of, of yeah. the way we have to work these days, um, and we're open, our guys are active, we can come and visit customers, talk about projects, or customers are more than happy to come here. And uh, see, you know, what we what we're about, what we can do. Obviously, facilities like you, you guys have got there. That excellent facility that you you've got there is yeah. uh, is perfect for us to be able to show products, you know, live demonstrations, and and customers can really get their hands on and really feel what it's like. So yeah, fully operational and ready to ready to talk to anyone that wants to talk to us. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Um, you, what you just said there, I mean, uh, about our facility being open and uh, being able to use it. And like I say, hopefully in the future, you know, we, we do have a lot more engagement um, and you can you can uh, boost your product and get a bit more profile in it. We are always open uh, for, for any type of event like this. And uh, you're already, like I said, you've been, you've been a fantastic impact to us. Um, Super. But uh, yeah, it's um, absolutely brilliant that you're, you're getting involved in this event today. And um, we value your time and uh, greatly. And thank you very, very much for getting involved in, in the event today. And hopefully there's more to come in the future. Thank you very much, David. Super. Super. <laughs> Super. Super. Appreciate yeah, and hopefully in the not too distant future, we'll be able to meet face to face as normal. That thank you very good. much. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Hi, uh, welcome back again and um, thank you very much to uh, David for uh, your input, it's, uh, you're a valued uh, uh, partner within the, the company and uh, we really appreciate it. And we've uh, we done a quick question in here, just uh, a heads up for quick grind, it says, um, you know, it's great to see uh, you guys having such enthusiasm in uh, barrel cutters and uh, uh, Graham looks like he also enjoys uh, a barrel of beer now and again. I think that's a bit harsh <laughs> as well, I think. Well, it's true though, isn't it? <laughs> but, well, that's true, I am, absolutely. <laughs> anyway, uh, over to Mike to talk a bit more on this uh, fantastic barrel tools. Cheers. And of course, I don't drink ale, so... You no. don't drink, mate. No, you no, stop now. No. 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 You've been all sensible. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the thing with the, with the barrel tool, which um, perhaps we haven't talked about in too much detail, um, 
is applications. It is an application specific tool. Um, it's If you've got it in your arsenal with the right cam software, then it will be invalid. And once you've got used to it and understood it, um, and obviously you can come to the factory here, we'll demonstrate it live to you. Um, we can look at, you You know, you, you could possibly send even send your um, components to us. We could, if we can put it on the on the Mazak and hold it, then, then we can replicate that to you. That's something that we offer through uh, John John Butler and, and Charlie, so the, the applications managers. Um, so, one of the things is to how to think about where to use a barrel tool. So let's 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 go back again. If you're scanning with a ball nose, and your cycle time is taking a long time, but you're getting a great finish, you want to improve your cycle time. Think about a barrel tool. It's probably as simple as that. Um, is you know, we're going to talk about lens tools in a second as well. You, you can look at some of the mold, mold and dye industry and, and uh, mold tools and deep pockets where the barrel tool will come in. Um, what we like to do is, is have as stubby as tool as possible. We change the tapers and the radiuses, flute radiuses, ball noses to suit the application. Um, you, can have, you can have two flute, we've done two flute, we've done eight flute. At the moment, the sky's the limit still. I don't think we've yeah, even absolutely. touched on the and limits uh, of what we can do. Just to quickly come in, yeah. I mean, uh, it's, it's also a multi-purpose tool as well. Oh right, it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but having yeah. a ball on the, on the end of it as well, so you can you can get into your pocket and do all the barrel work and fill up uh, the, the walls as well. So um, it's, it's such a versatile and fantastic tool to, to use. But... Uh, now I think we're going to go and talk about, yeah, we'll the, talk about the lens tool, which the uh, lens you, tools. you yep. mentioned earlier. But yes, I was a bit too quick mentioning them earlier. <laughs> I was going ahead of the slides, so apologise for that. <laughs> I'm not a professional, so back over to you. You tell me you were. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so uh, yeah, as as we were saying earlier on, lens tools, then we can go in again about the different rads, and uh, you can have whatever whatever rad you fancy. They're a they're a very very good good tool for surface area if you can imagine scanning with a ball nose uh, point two over a, over a surface and then applying uh, the lens tool with the size of rad that it's got on it you know it could be 12 18 20 uh, 25 uh, some of them some of them bigger but we tend to to work within that there is a lens tool being used on this part uh, as we speak there's another component sitting over the front the solid cam used with a lens tool and they also uh, with that with the part that's sitting in front of it the, uh, we manufactured the tool, which was an idea of uh, uh, Ben Miller uh, to c can we use it as, a, as an end mill as well. So we went up the flute, put the radius on it. So we went up the leg of the 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 the, the brake hub, uh, formed the radius, and then finished off all around the 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 part. Uh, so mm -hmm. it was actually a one in three tool. Mm. So uh, thank you for the input in that one, Ben. Uh, and uh, we've, we've actually applied that in different uh, uh, processes with, with different customers and different applications. Um, so uh, once again, you know the versatility of the of the lens tool is fantastic. Time saving is is huge. Um, and in in the game out there, where especially manufacturing plants uh, throughout the, the country, throughout the world, uh, every second counts, and every second's a penny. So uh, we, we we stress massively to, pe to customers how good this cutting tool is and how good uh, the barrel tool and encompassing the lens tool and process is uh, to uh, our business and uh, also to your business. Anything else to add Mike? Uh, well I'm probably going to add to that is um, we see this as such an important tool for us that we have a, a website dedicated to it that's barrel tools with an s dot com uh, it's going to be. It's live. It's now. It's. It's. You can go and have a look. You can download the, the brochure, the eliminator brochure, and then if you open up the brochure and then you go, oh, I, I don't know what the range is. Let's go back to what we always say: infinite possibilities, especially with barrel tools of all the different versions. We'll design it for your job, because it's feature specific. You do need to talk to us. It's. It's a lot better to talk to us. Just um, give us a bit of time. So if you say. I've got a job running tomorrow. I want to run a barrel tool. Probably not, not the way we do it, and uh, the best way to do it. If you say I've got a job running three days time, 
Uh, I'll need a bell tool for it. Chances are we could do it for you. Um, the important thing is is to get the right strategy. We'll design the tool. You tell us what you want to do. Uh, jobs are good. And, um, everyone's everyone's a, a winner in that in that respect. So yeah, go on to BarrelTools.com. There's going to be videos and all right. sorts posted on there yeah. throughout. This this isn't going away. This is getting bigger and bigger. We we have inquiries from all around the world uh, about these these tools. There's lots of interest. Um, so we're really, really pleased. We we've invested a lot of time, a lot of effort, and a lot of money absolutely delivering these, and uh, we're pretty good already. Yep, we absolutely are. You know. Um, I can say we we we, uh, we can keep going on about it, and we, we do want to keep going on about it because it's a <laughs> it's a huge part of our business. Um, but the proof's in the pudding, you know. Try it, speak to us, and we'll come in and get, throw a technical ability against it, and we'll get results. And uh, so, moving on now, you know, uh, we've got another interview. I've caught up with uh, Scott Ravenscroft um, from CG Tech Very Cup. Um, I think during the lockdown, Scott's. Um, been down the gym because he's lost a bit of weight and he's <laughs> looking as fit as a butcher's. So um, well done, Scott. So uh, over to uh, Scott's interview and uh, thank you for your time, Scott, as well. So uh, catch up with you again soon. Cheers. Good afternoon, Scott. How you doing, Graham? Okay. I'm very good and uh, thank you very much for joining us on the Quick Grind Live putting event. No, no problem at all, and thank you for allowing us to be part of your event today, Graham. We're, we're very much looking forward to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, thank you for giving up the time uh, to come and join us this afternoon. Um, your support's absolutely fantastic. Uh, as you know, uh, you've, uh, as a partnership, uh, you've supported us very well over the last few years. But I was wondering if you could maybe elaborate a bit more on the, on what your software actually does um, tell us a bit more about Vericup in general. Yeah, so, so thanks Graham. Um, firstly, I'd like to speak a bit about how we've um, actually supported you um, with your event this afternoon. Um, obviously, SolidCam, you're working in conjunction with SolidCam and ourselves. Um, now SolidCam are based in the north of England and your tech centre is obviously based in the, in the south of England or southwest of England. Um, so obviously, SolidCam are doing the programming for the component. Yeah. Um, I don't know how much of a proven post-processor they've got for your Mazak. So what really it's allowed SolidCam to do is run the G code through Vericut as it would run on the machine tool, and, and a, you know that's a, in, indeed about what Vericut's all about. Vericut will run the same G code. Um, through the simulation as it would run on your machine tool. So thus it allows SolidCam uh, specifically for your event to be able to prove out their process um, offline before they come on site. Um, so when they do eventually come on site to prove or when they came on site to prove out the program, um, they already knew the G-code was good, safe, um, minimal amount of time in proving out the job because Again, the benefits of Vericut is you can take all that um, prove out offline and, and do that all through the software. So in a nutshell, Graham, what is Vericut doing for the event? Um, independently um, proving out the same G code that your Mazak machine tool runs. Um, yeah. And that's indeed what SolidCam have done for your event today. You know, just taking out of that what you've just said there, Scott, it obviously gives uh, your customer base a lot of confidence uh, in using the Vericut product when they can pretty much go to the machine knowing that they're not going to have any collision. Am, am I right in saying that? Yeah, and yeah that's, that's the whole objective of the software. Um, yeah, the, the objective of the software, safe program, right first time every time, and to minimize downtime in terms of prove out of the yeah. machine. So and indeed, in most cases, there'll be no prove out whatsoever. They, they know the program's good. Uh, before they actually take it to the machine tool to run. Right. Um, obviously, you've got a lot involved in your software. Um, you know, it's a very powerful system. Uh, from my point of view, you know, I've been involved in uh, uh, and, and attended some uh, force events, uh, which I found very, very enlightening. Um, I know it's a bit of a buzz for yourself. You're always improving it. Every time I've been to one, something else has been added on, and it's always very, very interesting. Could you maybe tell us a bit more about the, the Force product? 
Yeah, sure. So uh, we launched fourth to the UK market probably probably getting on towards four to five years ago now, Graham. It was a yep. bit of a slog at first. It was, um, you know, it's any with any new technology, I guess um, customers and prospects are a bit skeptical of technology, new technologies. So yep. we did a lot of hard work in the early days and, and to some degree are still doing uh, hard work proving the technology, but we, we, we're getting there with it and we're seeing more and more customers adopt the, the force module and essentially what force is going to do for you is look at an existing pro process um, really importantly against the characteristics of the material we're actually machining so it's physics based software yeah. um, it will map the process out for you in in graph form so you you're getting a calculation of chip thickness on the tool and you're getting a, a calculation of force and what we want to do is look at those that chip thickness and vary motion in the, in the NC program to flatten out that chip thickness, get a nice balanced um, NC program to maximize the cutting conditions safely. So, um, and what you're seeing with the product now is obviously, as I said, we, we launched a product to the UK four years ago. Uh -huh. It's a relatively new piece of software then becoming mature, mature and maturer. There's more and more gone into the software, mostly for ease of use. So what, what specifically for 9.1, um, Vericut 9.1, is that we've actually introduced what we call force learn mode. Right. So we can look at the process. Um, prior to Vericut 9.1, the user would have had to click on the graph, get a reading. I want to populate that limit at that particular point. Well, force can actually learn from them results now and populate all the limits into the software. Uh, without very little user interaction, one or two mouse clicks, and you get an optimized process at the end. And, and that's what we've done and worked very hard on over the last year or so, so developing to, to bring that benefit to the, to the software. Yeah, well, the, the, from my point of view, it not only improves, improves cycle time, uh, also tool life, and uh, it's a benefit to the machine tool life as well, uh, which I find is a rounded package is uh, absolutely it, it fantastic. Is. So, you, so you're not going to just get a reduced cycle time. Um, if we think about what damages carbide, it shocks on the carbide. It spikes yeah, yeah. in the process, and uh -huh. and that's what's going to you're going to identify with force um, is have you got any bad motion in your NC program which is going to damage the carbide? Yeah. So it's not all about cycle time. It's about a more um, cost efficient process in terms of reducing your consumable spend as well. Really interesting, Scott. Thanks very much. Um, you did touch on it previously about, about your customer base. How does Vericut go out there in the field and support the customer base? Really, really important. Really good question, Graham. Um, and very, very important to us. And, and something we're very, very proud of, in fact, is, is the level of service and support um, that we can provide to our customer base. So, um, I mean, I've worked in the software industry quite a long time now, Graham, and um, prior to, you know, <coughs> What, what, what will customers typically be used to? Well, sometimes you may pick up the phone, you want to talk to an engineer directly at that moment in time. Well, yes, CG Tech absolutely can offer that service. So if, you, if I was to dial the support line now and I want to talk to an engineer right now, I can do that. Um, and I can then ask that engineer to remote into my system there and then to have a look at that particular problem you're having at that moment in time there and then. So um, it's about giving the, the customer a high level of service. Um, we're, not, we're not interested in putting them into like a ticketing system or a queue for an engineer to call them back. That's not good service. And that's not what an end user wants. Um, Bang on. And also speed of turnaround in terms of customer buys a new machine, um, the, the machine tools delivered. They want that um, very cut machine configuration delivered pretty quickly, and we can obviously uh, we can offer that service as well. So we we do pride ourselves on on the service we offer our our end users. Well, you certainly assist us greatly, Scott. And um, hope that wasn't too much of an endurance test for you. And uh, <laughs> I'd just like to say, uh, thank you very very much uh, for being part of this uh, live cutting event with Quick Brain today. 
We value your support greatly. Hopefully, very soon, we can have a proper face-to-face -face instead of sitting on the screen. And uh, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much, for Scott. Oh, well, thanks again, Graham, for inviting us. Thanks very much. Not a problem at all. You take care. Hi, and uh, welcome back. And uh, thank you very much to uh, Scott for your valuable time. Uh, very much appreciated. And once again, another very valid uh, partner within uh, the tech centre at Quick Grind. And uh, I'll pass you over to Mike now. Uh, gonna, uh, have you got another question? Or? Yeah, we've got a question. Oh, very good. There we go. Question uh, from someone called Carl in, in the USA. Uh, he's asked if can he get barrel tools over there? And the answer is yes, you can, Carl. Uh, we, we do, as I said before, we deal worldwide. Uh, we have a very slick operation that allows us to supply tools quickly. Um, if you go on our website, you'll explain it in more detail. But um, it's the same process. We, we, we'll discuss with you online. We can have a Zoom meeting. We can discuss the part, um, what you're trying to achieve, where you are now, where you want to go, where, where you want to get to. So uh, not a problem, you know, as, as, as long as we can ship to you, basically, we'll supply you. So um, thank you, for Carl, for that. Um, we want to just say to you a little bit about the slides. So the slides we're showing today are based around new brochures that we've got out and available from the website. Um, these are only highlighting certain ranges of tooling that we do. There, there's a lot more brochures coming coming out, but um, don't think that's all we do. You know, it's uh, Graham mentioned before T slots, I mean, Woodruff's T slots. Yep. Oh, you, <coughs> you, you, you basically name it, we'll do it. Um, I think again, as Graham said before, there'll be tailor made for the application. Woodruff's um, go on. Yeah, so. yeah. Go, on. <laughs> go on, mate. <laughs> Woodruff's dovetails. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We, we, we have uh, uh, any kind of special, you know, we, 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 can, uh, we can do uh, the Christmas tree cutters as well, which oh, you're a bit yeah, done for you then. And uh, we also do, our, which Michael would briefly tell you about, um, on the, uh, the, um, the clay machining as well. So we're, we're oh, a fantastic favorite. range that we've got. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, clay machining, you know, it's uh, for the automotive, well, not just automotive, but the yeah. design industry, there's there's studios around the world now yeah. using our, our sp specifically designed tools for machining the clay models. Yeah. Um, it, it's, you, you'd think it'd be an easy thing to do, but the, it's a, it's a very, it's a hard-wearing um, material. It uh, is easy to clog, so what we had to do on that was produce um, uh, some tools which have a very high slip capability, uh, low coefficient friction on the coating, but also a very sharp tool. Um, one of the first customers we tried, we developed, developed it with, was getting one or two um, full model cars from a, a tool. If he was lucky, often it would jam and stick on the tool. So we de with working with them, we de developed it, and he happily gets uh, between five and six full-size cars machined with it, uh, from you know anything from 20 mil down to two mil. We do very filigree little um, door insets on, on things like that. Uh, the tools now are fully balanced as well, um, which is another addition which we've added to the the tech center. So balanced tooling is something we do if requested. Yeah. Uh, I think yeah. You you just ask us. Uh, if we can't do it, we'll work out a way to do it. Yeah. The reason why I threw that question over to Mike about the uh, the uh, clay machining is I've not got any customers that use it, so Mike's a, Mike knows a lot more about it than I do. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, like I said, all, all through this, we've, uh, we've worked as a team, and um, uh, it just emphasizes what we uh, diversities that quick can, can go to uh, uh, and manufacture something out of... Uh, uh, solar carbide rod. Um, we've been at it for a very, very long time. Uh, we, we like to think we're the, we're the best at it. Uh, that's the way we go out and uh, portray ourselves. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk a bit more after the next event. But uh, moving swiftly on, um, 
when it's when it's solid cams, uh, very strong fields is a uh, solid cam Swiss, which in the uh, machine shop term is sliding head technology. Uh, solid cam are very very strong in this, and they've got fantastic software. So we're going to get a bit of a, a, a demo uh, from Mark from Swisscam on the on the Swiss technology. Okay, over to you, Mark. Thank you. So the CAM support for Swiss Turn is both comprehensive and simple to use. In this overview, we will be demonstrating this on a Citizen M32 machine. This machine is a three channel machine with five axis capabilities, multiple machining patterns and superimposition. All of these features are fully supported in SolidCAM with full machine simulation. SolidCAM supports all tool holder types including multi-station tool holders for both milling and turning tools. Tools can be moved to different stations and dynamically viewed to make sure the tools are set to the optimum position. Programming of operations is exactly the same as it would be for any mill turn machine in SolidCAM. Here we are selecting the area to turn directly from the model and the tool from the library. The toolpath is then calculated with full support of cycles on the machine. As with all operations, this can be viewed and simulated as the machine will cut it. Even adding more complex machining strategies such as cylindrical milling is kept simple. Select the area to machine direct from the model, the tool and solid cam does the rest. Once the programming is complete, the channels can be optimised to get the best cycle time on the machine. Currently the part is programmed as a single part, but in reality we want to be working simultaneously on both spindles. This is done by selecting the operation to start machining on the second spindle. Now we can see the operations working together in all three channels. Based on this, SolidCAM will automatically choose appropriate machining patterns which can be reviewed and changed by the programmer, as in some cases alternate patterns are available. The programmer has full control over the positioning of the weight codes and SolidCAM will assist this by dynamically checking and advising any issues. Now the complete program can be simulated as it will be cut on the machine with all axes working together. This highlights any potential collisions and will show any superimposition moves programmed, giving confidence the program is correct before being passed to the machine. This can significantly reduce machine downtime. Once this has been proven successfully, the G-code can be created in a single click, and here we see the result displayed in our SyncMaster software, clearly displaying weight marks and axis patterns. SolidCAM is available for all Swiss machines. For more information, please go to solidcam.com. What we're also going to do now, once um, Graham's finished, we're going to talk about just a few more uh, aspects to our overall um, range and services that we do. One we want to uh, talk about, uh, next slide, is the uh, Orbis range. Orbis is a lollipop cutter range. Uh, lots of lollipop users tend to just use it for undercuts or um, deburring. Uh, with the latest um, software, now we're looking at you know, tube milling, so we're looking at um, manifolds, uh, especially. What we're doing here is uh, we're producing different different geometries to suit different materials, so aluminium, and then another one for titanium, another one for steel, and then the overall, if you download this this brochure from our website, you'll see that you know, there's the an option because there's uh, basically we'll design it for what you want. Graham's got a customer who's happily machining peak with them and they're getting yep. tremendous finishes and results from that and that's yeah. not, not just an easy material really is it that one yeah absolutely it is uh you know the, the peak material can be quite aggressive it's uh it's a uh, abrasive material and um uh, once again we applied uh you applied the, the the correct geometry and the, the correct coating in the tx plus um uh, nothing else was really working but uh i think prior to that the the lollipops that uh, uh, our, our customer had been using there was a much development in them uh, and we, we keep saying that and we keep talking about infinite possibilities we, we apply a process through every every single uh, item that we do you could you can look in a catalogue and see 
hundreds of lollipops, all different sizes now, but they're all pretty much the one geometry. We, we make the lollipop to suit the, the, the process. It's, uh, again, we, we, we'll, we'll do the geometry for aluminium through steels, through stainless steels, through exotics, um, you know, carbon fibres, you know, the composites, uh, anything through that. Uh, and and you have to get the you have to get the ball right. You have to get the neck behind it correct. Uh, when you're using softwares as complex as uh, SolidCam, uh, they can manipulate the the system to almost machine 90 degrees when when we're doing a, a tube. Uh, uh, for instance, on a, a manifold on a uh, Autosport like or an, an F1, and uh, it, it almost looks like an impossible machine. You can maintain a diameter. You can can contain a consistency. And you can contain a machine part, so you're you're not having to rely on polishing or casting. You you apply the lollipop uh, again. It's down to about the finish that you want. If you if you want to just rough through it, you know you you, you put in a big step over. If you want to uh, get a mirror finish, you put in a tiny step over. An advantage of the our lollipops as well, we 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 put the geometry completely around the the the, the spherical mm. machine inside of it. Mm. So. You can actually drag machine as well with it. So when you when you're machining, you can, it, it's, it sounds like it's the wrong type of process, and it's going against engineering, uh, you know, philosophy. But if you drag machine with a lollipop, you know, you can you can pull it back up the other side of the the tube, and it works perfectly. The finish is absolutely fantastic. So the versatility that we put into our lollipops is uh, is we, we like to think it's we, we put a lot more thought into it than our competitors and people come to us with more and more complex parts, more and more difficult parts. Automotive industry, the aerospace and medical industry are coming to us with all different sorts of materials and they're throwing these problems at us and we solve them and we make the cutter again, the right cutter uh, for the right application and it's it, it, we, we follow through it through it, this whole uh, live uh, event that we've done, it's mm. infinite possibilities and that's what we want you to use us for. I'm sold on it. <laughs> so we also want to just uh, show you a few more slides here. Um, one here is, is QuickCam. QuickCam is our application uh, model, if you like, where uh, John Butler is our applications manager. And you can see on the slide there, you know, if, as we are, the restrictions of visiting places, uh, there's a virtual engineering uh, capability that we can have where we can discuss your your particular application with it we're as the, as the brochure will see if you download the brochure it's tool path optimization there's programming solutions it's developing the tooling around those applications that you need it's a complete tooling process so um, please please do contact John uh, or if, uh, obviously contact um, the contact at uh, contact at quickwine.com <laughs> is that right and then uh, I'll yeah, do. We'll, yeah, <laughs> we'll get there. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll be happy to. Uh, I'm tired now. <laughs> we're happy to um, to discuss all this with you. Uh, the next slide is the Quick Rhine Technology Centre. That's where we are. It's um, we, it's a it's a lovely shame we couldn't show, show it around. But if you actually if you go on to MTD CNC, uh, we've done a lot of interviews and a lot of. Nice to be dig for them there, Michael. Oh, yeah, that was <laughs> great, wasn't it? I was thinking, you what I'm talking about. We did a swarf and chips with them, so a takeover, a swarf and chips takeover, <laughs> and I walked people around the, fa the factory, walked your, uh, the camera around the factory, discussing where we are and um, everything about the factory. So have a, have a look on that. You know, the guys from MTD have done a fantastic job for us over the years. Um, you will, you, when you do come and see us, and please come and see us, keep saying that, but you, we'll show you the technology center, and uh, we've got training rooms upstairs, which yeah. you, know, you, you can really use as well. Come All and our use partners it. Yeah. can do that. More um, than welcome. The probably the next thing with the next slide we're going to talk about is the quick edge. Uh, we had a, a question from James. Hi, James. He uh, he asked about how many regrinds can we get from a tool. It's in some ways uh, it's it's, uh, I mean it's infinite again. Isn't it's it? infinite it's again. I mean we it's we can get up to on our on our taper tools. Uh, there's some of our customers, especially the overseas customers, of mm. have had up to 20, 20, re oh, no. 20 remanufacturers. We don't we don't call them regrinds. So not a boy, Mike. It's a remanufacturer. Well, it <laughs> <laughs> for me to pick you yes. up on. Well done. Yes. Uh, when we when we say remanufacturer, folk think we're a bit snobby about it, and they say, "Oh, you mean a regrind?" And we, we, no, it's a remanufacturer. We remanufacture every process, uh, every piece of geometry, 
uh, down the, the, and sending it away for coating. It, it's not just a lick up the flutes. It's not just a wee end grind. We remanufacture everything. So what you're actually getting back is a brand new tool. Uh, every time. So when I say we do, we can remanufacture 20 times. Every time that tool comes back to you. The only thing that's really changed is the length. And that's where the restriction is when it gets too short to be able to apply it into your, your programming. Mm. So it is a remanufacture. Customers use us and we, ha we send them back and they, they run them like for like. You know, put the cutter back in at the same data that they've been using prior to it and they get a result. So we, we call it remanufacture because it absolutely is remanufacture. And um, again, for the, for, for, your, for, the, for the people that are watching and potential customers and customers we have on board, uh, it's a testament to, for them to say uh, uh, there's a massive saving again. You know, so we, 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 can, we can go through a process with you and we can guarantee you within six months to a year, if you buy into remanufacture, you're absolutely saving money. So uh, and, that's and, all I can And of course, it's not it. just our own tools. You know, we're happy yeah, to take yeah. other, other kind um, of tools, especially as a big process we have at the moment with drills. Yeah, we, we'll remanufacture anybody's tools. They mm -hmm. don't like it, but we do. Uh, <laughs> so uh, 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 drills as well, so we can remanufacture them. But, um, uh, some, some some big investment recently on long series drills and yeah, 30, yeah, 40, absolutely. 50. Yeah. So we've put uh, a new P axis on so that we can uh, keep the keep the tool tool stable. So that yeah. that's that's another thing you can uh, we can rewrite for you, and of course we can make you the new tools uh, the yeah. new drills as well. Well, Mike, I think we're uh, well, we've um, got a couple more look vending coming towards the vending now, which is uh, how we drive the. Uh, our, our stock around the world. Um, uh, we're vending in probably virtually all the countries, well, yeah. virtually every country yeah. that we deal with, we've got vending. Yeah. Um, it's uh, it's very good uh, for your stock control. Um, it helps you with your ISO standardizations as well mm -hmm. uh, when you're looking down that route because it trims everything down, and you you have a you have a system in place that uh, is is controllable. Everything's controlled from Cheeksbury. We don't have any, any other uh, uh, facility throughout the world. Uh, everything that gets gets vended. So if a uh, if a car gets vended in uh, in Chile, or uh, Brazil, or in Italy, we see it on our screens. It's a fantastic setup. It's our own setup. We we built the software for it. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a it's something that we're very proud of. And it's, a, it's also a system that we sell throughout the throughout the country as well. So you can buy into the, the vending side and the remanufacturing side and stick it all in one of our vents and have it on site so you get next minute delivery not next day delivery yeah absolutely okay. right perfect Ooh, the end. we have come to the end and that's pretty much the end folks and um, all we can say is uh, thank you very very yeah, much for you. attending uh, we really appreciate it thank you very much to all our partners and a big thank you to the man uh, behind the, the scenes here who's done everything, <laughs> Ben Miller. He's sat there all day. He's, he's not in the picture and he's made all this work. Done a brilliant so job. Excellent. Thank you very much, well done, Ben, and thank you uh, to Charlie thank as well, you, Charlie uh, well. Uh, our, our applications engineer. And uh, yep. once again, uh, from the both of us, thank you very much. See you soon. Take care. We'll see you again Take soon. Bye-bye. Keep safe.